Cardigate as chairman of the Seamus Ring Sinn Féin Common, Dalnamore, Achnashilan, I welcome you to this special commemoration to mark the 100th anniversary of the Selton Hill ambush. 100 years ago today, 11 IRA volunteers were ambushed on this site by British Crown Force. When the gunfire ceased, six of our volunteers were dead. Four from Leitham, one from Cavan and one from Longford. Today we will lay a reed on the graves of our fallen heroes. Welcome to the Republican plot in Achnashilan. We start with our reed laying ceremony. First I will ask Seamus Rin to lay a reed in memory of his grand uncle Seamus Rin. I now ask Frank Mulvey to lay a reed in honour of John Joe O'Reilly and Karen MacDonald. I now ask Mary McGurl to lay a reed in memory of Captain John Joe O'Reilly. Thank you all very much. Welcome to Kilnabar Cemetery, the grave of volunteer staff captain Michael Baxter, killed at Selton Hill. I will ask Ali Brady, a lifelong Republican, to lay a reed in memory of staff captain Michael Baxter. Welcome to Mohal Cemetery, to the grave of Joe Byrne, who was killed at Selton Hill. Our last Pat Reynolds to lay a reed in memory of volunteer Joe Byrne. I will now ask our local Republican, John Reynolds, to say a few words about volunteer Jobber. Thanks. Um, the whole misfortune and question about Sentinel Hill has been bandied about for so many years, a hundred years now, so I'm not going to go into any great detail about what happened or why it happened or anything else, other than to say that over the years and all that was said and talked about and written about, Sometimes they missed out on things like the courage of the men and the discipline of the men that were there that day. Um, when you think about the situation they were in 
and having been surprised by the Hertfordshire and Staffordshire Regiment, the Black and Tans and the Auxiliaries. Uh, when they looked out from the window of Paddy Flynn's house and from the gable of the house and saw what was up on the road facing them, uh, those were no raggle taggle army that was uh, in charge that day on the hill. There were, there were the Hertfordshire and Staffordshire Regiment crack soldiers from the British Army who had seen action in France and in the Dardanelles. And uh, those were young men who hadn't, we'd say, been confronted by anything like what happened that day. And yet with all the discipline and the courage they had uh, came through in them, whereby the easiest thing they could have done that morning, or evening I should say, was to throw up their hands and get a, a bit of a sheet or a flower bag and walk up the hill uh, waving the flag and throwing their guns out in front of them. But instead of that, they opted to take a chance and fight it out and die if they had to with the gun in their hand. Um, the British Army, as they knew then, and we all know now, never took surrender very serious anyway. So the chances are that if they had done that, they would have, they, 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 it would have ended up the same way. They'd have been killed and slaughtered in the same way as they were. On the way into Mohol, at some stage, they encountered Dr. Pintland, and he was supposed to have stopped them or let down the window and said to them, did you get them all? and he seemed somewhat disappointed when they told him they didn't think they did so obviously he had perfect information as to how many of them were and where they were. He came in, they came into Mohol here and then went on, uh, gave a report to Gore Hickman who was the, the, the DI in these parts and went on to Carrick then and left them on the floor of the barracks in Carrick uh, for people, uh, the dying and the dead, Conley died that night uh, for the people to come in the next day and identify the bodies on the west over there. But Gookin went in uh, thinking that his son was dead, but he was glad to say that he wasn't. He had escaped and was on the run someplace close to home. Um, some of them that were able to be moved were brought in and arrested and, and, and imprisoned. And uh, young Joe Burden was brought home to Barnacoola the next day and buried here. That's as much as you can say about them. They were brave men, and their people too were brave people. They had to put up with a lot, and indeed, many a year afterwards, those that, depending on who was in charge in government, uh, they got a hard time enough, and particularly those who wanted to carry on the same struggle were, were hounded and rounded up and got no better treatment, indeed, in a lot of cases than they would have from the British. That's all. God mercy on them all, that's all we'd say. Welcome to Clonboney Cemetery in the County Lanford, where Captain Sean Connolly is buried. I'll ask Sean Sullivan to lay a wreath in memory of Sean Connolly. Agzanish Tori Karm Kosulavan Kultus Erun Shesher Lekra, a four boss Eknoch Salton, Agus Erun Kuiger Ella, a dialig Slamas. Gee, Eve, um, it's an honour to be here talking to you on the centenary of, of Selton Hill. Um, without doubt, it was the most defining engagement of the War of Independence in Leitrim. Um, and I suppose in any conflict there is always one event that stands out from the rest and in for the people of Leitrim and for County Leitrim 
Selton Hill is that event and um, I suppose even a century on from it, the significance of it in the legacy that it has left and um, for, for the people of Leitrim it's something that's still etched in our memory that six Irish men were, 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 were gunned down on Leitrim soil by, by people not from here, from a foreign occupying force. So it's appropriate uh, that we commemorate them. Sadly, we can't commemorate them in a, in, a, in a better way, given the current situation, but it's important we mark them, mark the memory of all those and what, they, what, what happened those days. So just the week before Shelton Hill, of course, we had the ambush at Shee Moor on the 4th of March, 1921. So, the 11 people who were in the flying column that morning, they left Egan's of Eslin Bridge, probably under the cover of darkness very early that morning, to travel in the direction of Balnamore where they were planning to planning an ambush. And they stopped at Flynn's at the foot of Selton Hill. And the 11 members of the column, the six that passed away, unfortunately, their leader was Sean Connolly from Balnalee. Um, he was a very, very well known and very successful freedom fighter in the Longford Flying Column and only a couple of weeks previously had been sent by Sean McKeown to assist in setting up of the Leitrim Flying Column. He was the leader and um, he was still alive as he left Selton uh, but, and he was thrown onto the lorry. Uh, onto the Tans lorry, but he, he, he died subsequently in, in Carrick and Shannon. And I suppose the esteem in which he is held is proven by the fact that the GA club in Balnalee is named after him. So that's Sean Connolly's. He was the leader that day. Next we have, we have Michael Baxter from Kildoa, Bombay, County Cavan. Uh, he was a railway clerk in Balnamore. Uh, joined the local IRA of that time um, and he's buried in Kilnevart just over in the parish of Templeport just on the Leitrim Cavan border. Then we have Seamus Rin. Seamus Rin was another fearless guerrilla fighter. He actually went to assist the Longford Flying Column in October of 1920 at, a, at a, an attack on the barracks in Arva in County Cavan. He had gone to Longford as part of the the IRA to train up for prepare for a Leitrim flying column. Um, he was 25 when he died. He was born in Drumcrumman uh, and the family later settled in Tarman and Balnamore and down through the generations they have they have been involved in the in the in the Republican tradition since then. Um, then of course we have the two John Joe O'Reilly's from Achnashilin. The taller of the two was John Joe from Miscon. His brother, Thomas O'Reilly, had been in the Shemore ambush the week before. He was part of the other flying column. Uh, sadly, he suffered probably the more gruesome of those that were killed that day when a grenade exploded uh, close to his face. And that badly disfigured, um, badly disfigured him as a result, and he died at the scene. Um, the other John Joe O'Reilly, who we believe were very distant relatives. He was also 21 from Darren Keher, uh, the eldest of 13. Um, and of course the two Rileys were, were buried side by side with Seamus Rin in the Republican plot in Achnashila. Uh, and the last one who was killed was, was Joe Byrne or Joe Byrne, the eldest of those in the flying column that day. He was 32 from Curry Cramp in Bornacoola. He uh, wor again worked on the railways, similar, similar to Baxter. He had been in Drummond in Mohol and, and settled later in Balnamore and actually was a member of, of, of the Balnamore GA team that won the Leitrim Senior Championship in 1913. Another fearless uh, fighter and the Tans were, 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 were keen to get him or arrest him and he sadly lost his life that day. So they were the six that were killed. Uh, the five who 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 survived? Um, two of them were in in McCullough's house, which was beside Flynn's, and they managed to escape. Um, 
Paddy Gokin uh, was from Drum Snare. Um, he later emigrated to the uh, United States, came back to Leitrim and was a county councillor for Fianna Fáil up until the 1960s and indeed his son and his granddaughter Sinead Gokin would have been councillors for Fianna Fáil uh, right up to recently. Um, Paddy often spoke of how as he left the site, the ambush site, he could see his dead comrades being lifted onto the lorry by the tans and it was something that, that really stuck with him uh, until the day he died. Um, Andy McPartland uh, was another who, who escaped from Callow Hill. Um, he sadly lost his life a couple of years later. He joined the Free State Army, but he, he, he lost his life, slipped and banged his head around 1931. Um, the family would still be living uh, around that area, uh, just outside Baltimore. Uh, P. McDermott from, from, from Kilty Gary. Um, he was also fortunate to escape. He did join the Gardaí shortly after, uh, after the, the, the truce and the treaty, uh, but eventually settled down in County Cork where the family ran a, a post office in, in County Cork. The only other one that, <coughs> that was escaped or survived uh, but was actually arrested and caught by the Tans was Jack. Hunt from Rinna Kearney in Carrick and Shannon. Jack um, was badly wounded. He was taken to taken to Boyle initially and then eventually to the Curra uh, mil Military Hospital. He was charged in connection with uh, what had happened at Selton Hill but he was released uh, after the truce and uh, Jack subsequently emigrated to the United States. And the last of the survivors was of course the great story of, of Bernie Sweeney from from Balnamore. Bernie had uh, managed to get away from the, the ambush but was badly wounded in the groin. He hid in a drain uh, underwater amongst rushes and survived and was not found by the tans who had scoured the fields looking looking for them. The tans left and he was discovered later that night by, by locals. He was brought in a horse and cart uh, from Gorva back in the direction of Alnamore and recuperated in, in, in the, up in the mountains in Achnashilin in two houses, Culls and O'Rourke's and uh, actually rejoined the Flying Column uh, a couple of months later and subsequently was, ar was arrested again in Inniskillen and interned for several years up in Peterhead in Scotland. So they are the 11 men who were there that day Six of them lost their lives, five of them survived, but I think the legacy of that day is something that is still with us in Leitrim. It is still part and etched in the memory of Republicans throughout Leitrim, and it's only right that we can commemorate them. Sadly, not the way we would like, but our yes, Diego, our Adam Jewish. Thank you, Cormac O'Sullivan. Another hundred years has passed, and hundreds more of our men and women has been added to the roll of honour in the struggle for Irish freedom. Today, as Republicans, we remember all those who gave their lives for Irish freedom. It is up to us to continue their struggle for a free and united Ireland. On a Duch, the Parican Pirish, Era Sayer, Era Gillacht. I now ask Sean Ward to play around the beam.